Hello, I am Dr. Saurabh Patwadhan and in this video I will be speaking about a case of dense cataract, patient is slightly myopic. I want to show the nucleus management and the parameters that I generally use for managing this kind of cataract. So on the right side you can see the vacuum, torsional amplitude, also phaco parameters will be shown. On the left side there will be irrigation pressure that will be shown. So this is a case of a high myopia patient and you can see the nuclear sclerosis here. So this is a dense cataract grade 3 to 4 and uh, I am planning to do half trench followed by chop. I call it half trench chop. I think that is my preferred method for these kind of dense cataracts. I am using Hylucoat here which is combination of hyaluronate and chondrite sulphate which helps in preventing any damage to the endothelium during the procedure. For harder grade of cataracts, I want the rexis not to be small. So at least 5 mm of rexis is what I need. If the rexis is too small, sometimes it makes the nucleus management a bit difficult. Denser cataracts are easier to hydro dissect and also rotate. During the first trench, I'll be using lower IOP. I start off with 40 centimeters of water as you can see on the left side of the screen and uh, then I raise it to 50 centimeters. Let me introduce uh, different parameters you will be seeing on screen. This is the vacuum. On the lower half, there will be torsional phaco, which is there. And just above that later, when I start using the longitudinal phaco, it will be shown as phaco power. And on the left side of the screen, there is the irrigation pressure. So it determines the bottle height in a gravity based machine i am using constellation where iop is being maintained this in this uh, vacuum the 95 the big number shows the actual vacuum at that moment while on the lower scale it shows that uh, it increases from 0 to maximum set is 95 and it will vary in different steps of the surgery so when you are watching the surgery you can go back and watch these parameters so I am now doing trenching. You can see I am using 100% ozil here and avoiding any push on the nucleus using full power and making a good deep half trench followed by chop. Now for chop I have raised the IOP to 115 centimeters. I have also added the longitudinal phaco power which is set with 25 millisecond burst and 90% power. Well, Torsional is set at 100% with 40 milliseconds of burst. So as you can see I divided the nucleus in two halves. The longitudinal power really helps in burying into the nucleus and then achieving a good hold over the nucleus. I am using 1 mm Sinsky which is blunt. So we don't need actually very sharp instruments to break any of this nucleus. I just need good hold on the nucleus which is being provided by burying the tip using the longitudinal and torsional both and then I am using 400 vacuum to hold the nucleus. There is a little bit of water pulling which is disturbing my view but I am fully focused on the nucleus division here. The exposed tip is around 0.75 millimeter. We can also increase to 1 millimeter. If we feel that uh, the hold is not good, we can expose more tip and then bury deeper into the nucleus. But here the chops are being delivered very easily. You can see I am very slow and methodical in my approach. There is no hurry. And now I am going to the quadrant removal mode. I am using the same parameters for the first part of the heminucleus there is no need to change anything the posterior capsule is well supported by the rest of the pieces so I am not worried about that and you can see the anterior chamber is very well maintained there are no fluctuations which you uh, can see if there are fluctuations you can see the pupil constricts after taking off of every piece whenever the occlusion breaks the pupil kind of constricts a bit that fluctuation indicates that there is a surge at that point you must reduce your vacuum but here the antechamber is very well maintained with these parameters i am just delivering the 
FECO energy in bus. So I am giving very little FECO here even for denser cataract. And now I have shifted the illumination to more retro illumination because I want to watch the posterior capsule here. With denser cataracts and high myopia there can be fluid deviation which might push the posterior capsule anteriorly. In case I see it, I will reduce the vacuum further but as far as this case is concerned you can see the posterior capsule is very stable. That's why even for the last piece I didn't change any parameter. So that's the end of the nucleus management. Watch this video over and over again and you will get more knowledge about the FECO parameters. For more such videos do visit our website fecotraining.org.in and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.